The Vanguard VOO is one of the most popular index funds with over a trillion dollars in assets, but dividend investors are left out in the cold with a yield of just 1.4% on a $1,000 investment. That's just $14 in dividends, and that is a whole year. But I found five dividend stocks that beat that index fund, stocks with an average yield almost three times that of the VOO, along with solid double-digit price returns and a strategy that gets you the same stress-free investing as the Vanguard VOO. We're getting started with Digital Realty, ticker DLR, and it's 3.4% dividend yield. But stick around, and I'm going to show you how I found these dividend stocks, how they beat the VOO, and how to use them in your portfolio to get the same advantages as index investing. Now I realize that dividend yield for DLR might not trip your trigger, but understand we're not going for the highest yielding stocks we can find here. For a replacement to the VOO index fund, we're looking for stocks that are going to produce a similar price returns while also getting that dividend yield of two or three times that the overall market. A lot of the high yield dividend stocks we look at here on the channel might put more cash in your pocket, but they're not going to grow your portfolio. Even on a low 3.4% dividend though, you still get double the yield from the DLR versus that market average, and the upside price return could be very good. And that's because digital realty is on the edge of one of the biggest trends in artificial intelligence, that infrastructure demand for data centers to train and then run AI along with everything else in our digital lives. DLR is the seventh largest publicly traded real estate investment trust and owns over 300 data centers across the globe. Just over half the revenue is from the United States centers, but the company has a foothold in every continent. The trend to AI and the demand for data centers helped DLR post record bookings of $252 million in the most recent quarter and is going to drive growth for years. The company has grown the dividend steadily, increasing that payout 13% over the past five years. Now on this, I expect they're going to continue to spend heavily to build out more centers, but in a few years on that higher capacity, we could see dividend growth increase as the cash flow overtakes those spending needs. Their shares here are around their historical average valuation, here at about 21 times the expected funds from operations, or FFO, this year. So they're neither cheap nor expensive. FFO growth should be around 7% or better pace and help support that dividend and the price return. Real estate stocks have been absolute dogs over the last couple of years with those higher interest rates, but that is going to change when rates start coming down. Also though, and this is something I'm going to detail later, Having a real estate stock in the list helps give your portfolio that diversification that you'd normally get with the VOO index fund. And we're going to get right back to our list, but what is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, that VOO, and why is it so popular? And I guess just as important, why should you be looking for individual dividend stocks instead? The Vanguard VOO is an exchange traded fund, so a fund holding stocks so you can buy the fund instead of having to buy all those stocks separately. The VOO is managed to hold the same stocks as in the S&P 500 market index that we consider the broad stock market and it's the 500 largest companies in the United States. And you can see here, the returns track that market index almost perfectly. These are giants like Microsoft, Apple and Nvidia, along with 100 year plus companies like Coca-Cola. We're going to look at the pros and cons of this kind of index fund investing next, but that simplicity, the ability to buy one fund that gives you the entire market returns means the VOO is hugely popular, not just for individual investors, but also for those billion dollar pensions, university endowments, and insurance companies. The fund holds more than $1.1 trillion in assets and millions of investors. Now one thing, because it tracks the S&P 500, the amount it holds in each stock is based on the size of the company. The S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index, so you're going to see those trillion dollar giants like Microsoft, Apple, and Nvidia make up a big portion of this fund with more than 5% of the assets in each of these three. While if you look at the, some of the smallest companies in the fund like Mohawk Industries, Foxcore, and Ralph Lauren, these are less than 0.02% of the investments. While those big tech companies have boomed over the past few years, it's actually going to be one of the biggest drawbacks to the VOO that we'll look at next. First, the pros though, and why the Vanguard VOO is among the top three most popular ETFs out there. One is that just that stress-free way to invest, get that market return over the long term. You're not trying to beat the market because you are the market by owning all the stocks in that S&P 500 market index. With 500 stocks, you don't have to worry about any one single company plunging and destroying your returns. It's also the easiest investing strategy you're going to find. Buy one fund and you've got the whole market. 
no analysis to be done, nothing else. Finally, the VOO is also one of the lowest cost funds that you're going to find at just 0.03% charge to hold the fund versus some of those ETFs that charge half a percent and more. But as we say here on the channel, it ain't all rainbows and unicorns, and there are some drawbacks to the VOO ETF. First is as a market fund, since you're buying the entire market, you're never going to get any more than the S&P 500 market return. Now, that is not so much a horrible idea considering the average investor underperforms the market so much from trading in and out of stocks, but it does put a serious cap on your portfolio. That 0.03% management fee charged on your investments isn't anything to worry about, but you're still paying to hold the fund, something you won't have to do when you buy these individual stocks like the ones I'm going to highlight. The biggest drawback, though, is just that tragically low dividend yield. Collecting 1.4% yield means you aren't going to be paying any bills with the cash flow. Invest $10,000 into the VOO, and that's just $119 a year in dividends after taxes. It's less than 10 bucks a month. So I don't know, I guess you could save up two months and buy a Big Mac meal. Along with these five dividend stocks, I'm going to show you a way to get more than double the dividend yield while still getting that safety and the market beating returns. If you still like the VOO though, stick around and I'll also show you how to turn that Vanguard fund into a high yield dividend stock that pays you every single month. You don't hear quite as much about Morgan Stanley, ticker MS, as you do some of these other major banks but it's the highest dividend yield of the group at 3.5% yield. In fact, with an average yield under 2.4% on JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo, shares of Morgan Stanley are a regular cash machine, and the bank has grown the dividend by 142% over the last five years. Morgan Stanley is much more an asset management and investments firm than a commercial bank, which helps insulate it from some of the interest rate and deposit problems other banks have had to manage. It now manages over $5 trillion in client assets with a path to double that with strong growth in fee-based accounts and asset management. And along with that booming dividend growth, the shares have produced a 154% total return over the last five years, almost double the total return on the VOO. Now understand, it's not all about dividend stocks though. So if you want to see the five stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks, look for the link I'll leave in the description below. It's a free report I put together with The Motley Fool, some of the biggest stocks in my portfolio. These are the stocks I'm following in those major multi-year themes, those growth stocks with one of the picks up 100% and the group up an average 94% last year alone. That report is totally free. You're going to see the first stock immediately and they're going to email you the full report with the other stocks. It's an easy way to support the Let's Talk Money community and see some of my favorite stocks to buy. So look for that link below or just click the QR code here. A little higher dividend at 3.7% on Trinity Industries, ticker TRN, but slower growth for the safety part of your portfolio. Trinity is the leader in rail car manufacturing and leasing with 37% of industry deliveries and over 143,000 rail cars leased or investor owned. And while railroad shipping isn't exactly a growth industry, it isn't under any threat of obsolescence and grows close to the rate of the overall economy. On top of this stable growth, the company is trying to unlock a $25 billion opportunity in digital, analytics, and scale that could juice those returns further. The company has been able to grow the dividend by 65% over the last five years. And that yield is already twice what you get on the VOO, and that consistent growth means you should continue to collect those higher payouts. A stricter capital spending this year and next is the market forecasting 53% earnings growth over the next two years, putting that current price at the very good valuation and supporting future dividend growth. We've still got two more dividend stocks to highlight, one with a 4.9% yield, more than three times what you get on the VOO. But you know, my goal here isn't just to give you a list of stocks to buy. I want to show you how I found these, how to be a better investor so you can decide which stocks are right for your portfolio and your goals. Now for this list, I started with only stocks paying a 3% dividend yield or higher. That's kind of the cutoff for a good dividend yield in my book, and it's twice the yield you get on that broader stock market fund. You're going to see the dividend yield on any stock page, or you can start a screen to narrow down the stocks to research. It's still going to leave you with a lot to choose from, but it is a start. My stocks here don't have to beat the market every single year, but I do want them to keep up and then beat it over time. That's why first I screened for stocks that have returned at least 12% over the last year, about half the S&P 500 return, and then looked for those five-year price history to make sure that the total return has beaten the overall market in that period. Most importantly though, to give us that market-like safety across our stocks, I made sure to pick stocks from different sectors of the economy. Remember, a sector is just a broad grouping of companies that serve a similar need in the economy, like utilities, energy, and industrial goods. The economy and business cycle affects companies in a sector similarly, so the stocks in each group tend to rise and fall together, but 
differently from stocks in other sectors. For example, stocks and consumer staples and utilities are generally going to do better than tech stocks during a recession, while real estate and financials may outperform when interest rates fall. You can find examples of stocks in each sector by going to the Spider Sector Tracker on SectorSpiders.com and then clicking through. For example, you're going to find stocks in retailers, auto, and entertainment in that consumer discretionary sector, while, while healthcare includes drug makers, hospitals, and biotech companies. So here, making sure you have stocks across at least five or six of the 11 stock sectors is going to give you the portfolio with a market-wide safety. Whatever the economy throws at you, some sectors are going to shine and take your portfolio with them for higher returns. So that's what I've tried to do with these stocks in real estate financials, industrials, and next in technology and energy. There are plenty of dividend stocks in tech to choose from, but few pay the 4% yield you get with IBM or have as much hidden value in the shares. Just a year ago, the words IBM and good investment went together about as well as socks and sandals at the beach. But with the trend to artificial intelligence, the company is profiting on more than a decade of preparation. IBM was one of the first on the scene with its natural language AI Watson system in 2010 and has expanded that over the years. And yes, IBM still lags Microsoft and Google in its capabilities, but the company is carving out a share of that market. And even a sliver of that generative AI market is going to be worth billions. IBM here is a cash flow machine generating over $11 billion in free cash flow over the last year. That's more than enough to pay the $6 billion dividend and buy back $400 million in shares. Even after the recent 32% run in the price, IBM is still trading for about 19 times on a price to earnings basis and two and a half times sales versus other enterprise competitors like Microsoft trading for 36 times earnings and Oracle trading for 29 times earnings and double the price to sales investors are paying for IBM. That means IBM is still considered a value stock in this theme and could still see that share price continue higher along with the trend. We're targeting the Vanguard S&P ETF, the VOO in this video, but you can use the same idea to find stocks to replace any fund you hold. In fact, check out this video next, the seven monthly dividend stocks that beat the QYLD. Now, that monthly dividend fund is one of the most popular around with its 12% yield, but I found seven stocks that beat it hands down. Energy stocks have been some of the best dividend payers over the last few years, and few have done as well as Diamondback Energy, ticker FANG, with its 4.8% yield. Now, with the price of oil already in the mid-70s per barrel, we may not see the kind of price returns we had in FANG over the past few years, up 640% from the pandemic to this year, but oil stocks are still cash flow machines. The average cost of production for most major explorers is between $40 and $50 a barrel, leaving lots of room for profit. And Diamondback is one of the most efficient in its group. The top chart here shows free cash flow margin or profitability measured by that free cash flow over oil production, with Fang topping the list at a 36% margin. This year's production is set to increase between 3 to 4%, with leverage and share buybacks pushing the base dividend up 7%. Diamondback pays out a base dividend of $0.90 cents a share, then pays out additional cash flow through its $42 million share repurchase program and paid investors another $1.07 per share in special dividends. Altogether, the stock has produced a 95% total return over the past five years, beating the Vanguard VOO by a few percent, along with that dividend yield more than three times higher than the index fund. Now, For those of you still loving the Vanguard VOO, and I'll admit it is a great fund for a one-stop investment there is a way to boost that dividend yield and get paid every single month. This is called the covered call option strategy, and it's one of my favorites for cash flowing any stock. So let's say we own 300 shares of the Vanguard VOO for a portfolio value just over 146,000. It's a pretty good nest egg, but even that is only gonna pay you about $170 a month in dividends at that 1.4% yield. Instead, we can go here to the options tab, and you can do this on any investing platform. We're going to change this to show the July 19th options, about one month from the day that I'm putting this video together, and we can see the strike price for the call options along with the premium. Now remember, when you sell a call option, you give another investor the right to buy that stock from you for that set price, that strike price. For that, the other investor is going to give you that cash premium right now. So if we were to sell that $500 strike call options, we collect $3.51 per share right now. That would be an additional dividend of $351 on the just 100 shares. That's in addition to the $170 you're going to get from that VOO regular dividend. Now, of course, that regular dividend comes out every three months, but we're going to take that monthly amount for comparing here. More than $500 to help pay your bills. Now, this does give the other investor the right to buy those 100 shares of VOO from you at $500 each over the next month. 
it's just over 2% above the current price, which is possible that the S&P 500 jumps and we sell them for that price, which is why we're only doing this for a third of our total VOO holding, so 100 shares out of the 300 we hold. That way, we still have that unlimited upside on the rest of the shares. So if the VOO stays below $500 for the next month, the options expire worthless and you keep all 300 shares. If the VOO does move higher than that $500, you'd sell the 100 shares with that call option and can just turn around and buy another 100 shares to keep the 300 share portfolio. Then you just repeat this every month, selling the call options to triple that dividend yield on the VOO and collect your monthly cash flow. This is actually the same strategy used by the Global X S&P 500 Covered Call ETF, the XYLD, to produce that monthly dividend and 9.6% yield. That's almost seven times the dividend you get on the Vanguard VOO ETF. But you see here, there is a catch. Instead of that 24% return you would have gotten from the VOO or another S&P 500 fund, the income fund lost 2% over the last year, or a total return of about 7.5% with the dividend. Now, Doing this yourself, part of that loss you can avoid by selling higher call strike prices than we did in our example. You won't collect quite as much in dividends, not the 10% yield, but you can still collect more than four times the market average and still get much more of that price return from the overall market. Don't forget to get your free report and see the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years. The group up 94% last year alone with room to run. Or click on the video to the right for those monthly dividend stocks beating the QYLD. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.